The masks we're looking at are made by the Dogon people of Mali. The Dogon people make 78 different kinds of masks, all of them very, very arresting and striking and awesome. This is a Kanaga mask, but it's only part of a Kanaga mask, it's a fragment. It represents a bird, the bustard bird, uh, with a very big wing spread. And notice the dynamic quality of this face. This is a bird's beak. If you look at this, uh, it might remind you not only of a bird, but of a man and of an animal as well. And that's what the Dogon meant when they make this. It's kind of a synthesis of those three creatures. If I turn it sideways, you see how large and sharp the nose is. It has a very high dome-like forehead. And on all Kanaga masks, the mouth is a cone. And notice these holes. Sticks are inserted in these holes and they come out holes on the other side. Those are for bite sticks because the man who wears, I should say, dances this mask, holds onto the mask with his teeth. He clenches his teeth on that bite stick and that's what holds it on. You notice the traces of black. That's pigment. This is an old example, a very fine one. It has been danced. It is real. Uh, but a lot of the paint has worn off. These are the eye holes through which the dancer looks. You have to imagine the pupils of an eye moving behind there and a big superstructure above, and we'll see that in a minute. African masks, for me anyway, are endlessly fascinating. They tend to conform to a type from a given style region, but within that, there are very important, very significant differences from carver to carver, from area to area, from dancer to dancer. These three are Kanaga masks. They're among the most spectacular masks in Africa. They represent the bustard, a large bird, similar to the crane or the plover, uh, which is native to Africa as well as Asia. This is the part that goes over the dancer's face, and this rope netting rope arrangement goes over the back of his head. Notice the stick right here going through holes in either side of the mask. Uh, it is placed so that the dancer can clench his teeth on it and that's what holds the mask on in addition to the netting that goes over the back of his head. There's that sharp nose that we noticed on the fragments and there is the cone-shaped mouth but when we come along to the front, we see the projecting ears on the top of the box. It's always a box-type shape with rectangular eyes. But up here are what appear to be the legs of an animal. But they are not the legs of an animal. They represent the wings of the bird. Most African sculpture, masks, figure sculptures, whatever we're looking at, is made of one piece of wood. This is made of more than one piece of wood. Uh, the members of the wings, the, the parts of the wings, are made separately and lashed together. One, two, three, four, five, six, and fastened to the main body of the mask with leather tongs. The mask is painted. This one has more of its paint than the other ones we looked at, the fragment, uh, and it's always black and white. When the dancer dances, his hands tremble, and that represents the movement of the Creator God when he set the world in motion in back in time and memorial. We've just talked about Kanaga masks representing the bustard bird. Uh, this looks like a Kanaga mask. In fact, when I first got it uh, here in the museum last year, I thought it was a Kanaga mask, and then I did a little research and talked to some experts. It is not a Kanaga mask. It's a sim mask, S-I-M. The bottom part, this, represents an antelope. You might never get that when you looked at it without some help, uh, because we're looking at it from another culture, but of course a Dogon person would know exactly what this is. 
Like the other masks we looked at, it has a bite stick. That's how the dancer keeps it on. But as we look up and up and up and up, we see a tall, curved structure. That structure represents a thin human being. It's made of split bamboo, and the Dogon people highly value the curve. The more curved the split bamboo part of this is, the better the mask is, the better it represents the spirit that's involved. This part goes over the dancer's head. This is woven fiber, woven in strips. And then it has the netting that goes over the back of the dancer's head. This is the back of the sin mask. And you notice this piece of cloth which covers the back of the dancer's head. It's very coarsely woven, very thick fibers, and it's woven in strips this wide, or plated. I'm not so sure this is woven. It might very well be plated. Uh, of rather. Now this is the back of the sim mask, and we'd like to give you the experience of wearing this within our limitations. Uh, this is the netting that would go over the back of your head, and then you put your face right in here. This black part, of course, is the mount. You're going to look through these rectangular openings, those are the eyes of the mask, and you're going to bite on this stick, and then you're going to dance, and good luck. This is another Dogon mask. This is the Sirik mask, S-I-R-I-G-E. This is a mask which represents all the houses in the village. By inference, it represents all the ancestors in the village, and that makes it a very, very powerful mask indeed. When it is being danced, it is all the ancestral spirits of the village. It has the rectangular forms that we expect from a Dogon mask. Here are the eyes in here. And this is 15 feet tall and this was danced. In fact, the donor of this mask, Dr. Pascal James Imperato, was a medical doctor in Mali. He saw this being danced, and when he left, the people loved him so and were so sad to see him depart that they gave him this mask. It came in three pieces to the museum. We put it back together, and it's one of the favorite objects of our visitors, especially the children. Now we're going to go all the way up to the top, 15 feet up into the air. And when I touch it, it sways. And when the dancer danced it, it sways. And that was a very active, athletic dance. He would rotate his neck, or rotate his head, and the mask spun around in space. He would touch the tip of it to the ground in the four directions. The dancer could get hurt, and sometimes he danced with an assistant to take care of him. And you know now, having seen several Dogon masks, what to expect on the back of it. This is the netting that goes over the dancer's head. Here and here are holes, and that's for the bite stick, which in this case is missing. This is a very large helmet mask. This part sits on top of the dancer's head. It has the same little ears projecting from the top of the box that we expect. It has this diamond shape. And then we go up to the blade of the mask, the so-called plank that represents all the houses in the village. You notice that this mask is made up primarily of geometric forms. Triangles, straight lines, rectangles, squares, and circles.